materials you're going to need if you are painting with oils. Be sure to watch my video on oil painting basics and the oil painting starter kit before you continue with this video. Feel free to use whatever type of prime surface you like. I personally like using gessoed copy paper. I just tape it down on the back of a canvas panel or some kind of flat surface like this to keep it from warping. I'm using this plastic file organizer to hold my mirror up because it's kind of big, but you can use whatever size mirror you want or whatever you have. I usually get a couple of round tip and flat tip brushes to switch between when I paint. I also use a wider brush like this one to prep my surface before painting. To set up your palette, you can place the paint in whatever order you like, but I do suggest placing them a few inches apart and leaving a large empty area where you can mix all of your colors. You don't need much more paint than what I'm putting down on here, but you can keep your paint tubes nearby in case you need a refill while you're painting. Before you set your painting station up, make sure you cover any important surfaces that you don't want to get any paint on. I'm using a cheap vinyl tablecloth that I got from Walmart. This is the way I like to set up my painting station. All of my supplies are on hand and I can easily reach anything at any time. But the way you set up your station is totally up to you. I start by taking the widest brush I have and dip it in the solvent. In this case, I'm using turpenoid. And I mix it into the yellow ochre until I have an evenly thinned down puddle of paint. It should look something like this. Then you just coat your entire surface with a thin layer of paint. Once you've done that, you can take a rag and wipe off all of the excess paint off the surface, leaving a really thin wash behind. This is going to help to unify all of the colors in your painting, and it'll also take off some of the pressure of adding paint to that dreaded blank space that can be so intimidating. Before you put any more paint on your surface, take some time to choose a relatively comfortable position that you know you'll be able to hold for up to two hours. Make sure your body is pointed directly toward your surface or you're probably going to end up twisting uncomfortably and it's not going to be a great experience. Choose where you want your mirror and at what angle you want to place it and how you want to set up your lighting and everything. I clamped my light on a pole behind me and I pointed it down at the side of my head. And this created a very nice range of values on my face. Having good value contrast can be really helpful and it makes for more interesting composition so I encourage you to play around with the lighting and choose something that is interesting and striking at the same time. Once you're happy with your entire setup, you just assume your position and take a minute to steady your face in the mirror. Start by drawing the larger shape of your entire head, including your hair and ears. Really take the time to study what your silhouette looks like. It's probably not going to be a perfect circle or oval, so really take your time to see the outline of your head and slowly begin plotting in the shapes that you see. You'll notice that my eyes are constantly moving back and forth between my painting and the mirror. I double check myself by looking back at my reflection almost every time I'm going to put a mark down. It's very important that you get used to doing this because you're trying to draw what you see. So you constantly need to be double checking yourself and assess whether your painting is matching what you're seeing in the mirror. your rag to wipe away areas that you made a mistake on or that you want to define a little bit more and if you need to you can add more solvent to your rag to help take off thicker areas of paint. You can use this method in case you need to start over as well. Just take a little bit more solvent and just wipe everything off. I like to plot in the hair very loosely and just keep it as a big solid shape for now. Once you're happy with the overall shape of the head, you can start loosely plotting in your facial features, but make sure you do this really slowly and compare the size and placement of your features to one another as you go. Once you start defining the features, try to focus on the overall shapes again, seeing them not as lips or nose or an eyeball, but as a stretched triangle or a rhombus, for example. You'll add more detail later, so really focus on the overall shapes as much as you can for now. The important thing at this point is to get the overall shapes and proportions as accurately as you can. 
You can also start using shadows as a way to gauge proportions and shapes. Just start blocking them in as if they were solid shapes. Don't be afraid to make decisive marks because you can wipe off and adjust things as you need to. So just go for it and be confident with your mark making. At this point I realized there was a massive glare going on in here so I adjusted the light and now it looks a lot better. For the eyes, I like to start by adding the darkest shadows within the eye sockets and slowly continue to build up the shading around the entire face. You don't want to focus on perfecting any one feature at a time or your portrait is not going to end up looking very cohesive. For areas where you want to make them really dark, just use a little bit more pure yellow ochre and for areas that you want to lighten up, just use a little bit more solvent to thin down the paint. I like to leave the eyes for last, otherwise I focus too much on them and they detract from the overall cohesiveness of the painting. From here on, I just slowly build up the value contrast and adjust details as I go. I haven't painted in a few months, so I'm a little bit rusty, and you can kind of tell by how much I'm struggling right now to get the nose right. I also have a habit of using my finger to wipe away certain areas, and this is not a good habit to have, and it's more likely that you'll make a mess that way, so I don't recommend that you do this. You should always use a rag instead, but I personally have a hard time remembering this. At this point, I was pretty happy with the proportions, shadows, and the overall portrait, so I started adding in the final details. I mixed my yellow ochre with a little bit of cadmium red light and a little bit of ivory black to create a slightly darker brown, and that's what I used to push the contrast more. So with this color, I slowly began adding more detail and defining the darkest areas on my face even more. With this method, the lightest areas should be left pretty much bare so that you see the light wash that we added at the beginning. So the darker the area, the more paint you add on it, and the lighter the area, the less paint there will be on it. If you need to darken up your darks even more, you just add a little bit more ivory black, and if you need to lighten them up, just add a little bit more yellow ochre. And definitely don't be afraid to push the contrast between light and dark. During this final stage, I really slow down and make sure that I really think through every mark that I make. At this point, if I were to make a mistake, it would be a lot harder to fix it, so I try to be very careful. And that's how you start a self-portrait by laying down an underpainting. You can either leave this to dry once you feel that it's finished or continue adding color which I'm going to show you how to do in next week's video. Whoa! I'm not wearing glasses today! Is... Shut the... Up. I'm not wearing my glasses today and that's because I really hate painting myself with glasses. Not because I don't like the way I look with glasses, it's just a pain in the ass to paint glasses. So if you wear glasses and you're very proud of your glasses, you can definitely paint yourself with them. I'm just a lazy asshole and I refuse to do that. So this was the first part of, I think it's going to be a two-parter. I, I hope on how to paint a self-portrait. I was gonna make it just one video, but once I started painting, I started feeling like there's a lot of important things that go on in the very beginning stages of drawing your self-portrait where you're plotting in your sketch and everything. I just wanted the first part of this tutorial to be as detailed as it needs to be. Yeah.
You'll notice that I'm wearing um, a really ratchet looking shirt. Is that a is that an inappropriate word to use? Is that offensive? This is my painting shirt. It has stains on it and stuff. It was like five dollars at Old Navy. I recommend that you wear a shirt that you don't care about when you paint because if you're like me you're gonna get paint all over everything and oil paint is very difficult to clean. Skip that whole problem by just wearing a piece of garbage like me. I'm sorry that you're gonna have to wait another week to watch the second part of this tutorial but that's just the way it turned out. This is Between now and then, you could use that time to start practicing and start noticing value in your face. That would be a good way to stay busy while you wait for the second part of this video to come out in a week. I'm not a very patient person myself, so I apologize to all of the um, impatient people out there that are angry at me. So many people. So many. So that's it for today. I hope you liked this video. If you did like it, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more art tips and tutorials and me. And as always, if you have any questions or comments or anything, please leave them in the comments below. Send me an email. Tweet me. Tweet at me. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Bye! Mm. <laughs>